back to our live stream portion again. You know, final week of the regular season. Nick Gonzalez alongside Curtis Quill and of course Jessica Mori. She'll join us in just a bit in a nice heated weight room at West instead of uh, out in the nice. cold. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> we, we talked about it. I mean, this is the final week, the, some of the final games of the regular season for a lot of these kids. You know, they put their heart, soul, and their blood, sweat, and tears since August of two a days. And uh, sometimes, you know, they're going to, some of them are going to be going on playing until next week and playing in college. Others, this is the last time they'll ever suit, suit up for the rest of their lives. And then if you look at it from another perspective, a win tonight for some teams punches a ticket to the postseason, at which point you don't know whether you're going to be playing next week. For others, a loss would end a, a lot of football careers. So tonight is a huge night for so many of our area football team. Yeah, definitely. And a lot of it's a huge game for a game of the week. West, all they had to do was win. They would wrap up a district title. Of course, easier said than done, taking on a really tough Teague team out the Trojan Stadium. Teague could actually win a share of the district title if they could knock off West. West led 26-2 at the break, third quarter. Now Teague going to the air, but Nathan Garrett leaps up in the interception. Nice little return deep in the line territory. A few plays later, Garrick under pressure. Finds Guillermo as, uh, Acevedo. He does the rest of the work, gets to the end zone for the touchdown. 33 to two Trojans. They're feeling good. West defense looks strong all game long. Like the 2000 Ravens defense. Preston Johnson blows up the middle for a third down sack. And then fourth quarter, big sack by the Trojan defense on Zach Satterwhite. Nowhere to go. Zach Schneider takes him down. Fourth and 43 for the Lions. Teague would actually finally score late in the fourth. Mr. Patrick, then a burst of the middle for the touchdown. West wins 33 to 10. They would secure the number one seed in the district. And Jessica Mori, I'll tell you what, she was with a lot of happy campers earlier in the weight room. She joins us now from that very same weight room. And I'll tell you what, that's a huge win for West, especially going into next week. Thanks, Nick. Yeah, it is a huge win for the Trojans. Uh, all the happy, happy campers left uh, went home, hopefully going to bed because they've got a short week. They're going to play Thursday night against Academy at Waco ISD Stadium. 33-10 the final here. West does get the number one seed in the district as T gets the third seed. They will take on Troy on Thursday. That game is 730 at Mejia. I am joined now by West head coach David Woodard. Coach, coach you guys took back the opening kickoff for a touchdown and never let up the whole game. Just walk me through this game for you. You know, it was uh, just so proud of our kids and how they started fast. And, uh, you know, we uh, we talked about being able to, to get going so we could dictate the game how we wanted to. And then, you know, just, uh, you know, just proud of how they executed and what they did and, and the desire that they came out, you know, and had tonight for the win. And you guys, Nathan Garrick for you guys has been just he's been for you for your starting quarterback for two years now, right? Correct. Three years. Three years now. And so he ended his his senior year here in the regular season here at Trojan Field with a win. How special has he been for you? He had a huge game at quarterback and on defense. Yeah, he, you know, he is. He, he's uh, uh, he, he's the heart and soul of our team and, and, the, and the kids follow him. And he's a great leader and uh, uh, a really good player. And so, uh, you know, he's one of those guys that, uh, you know, we're going to lean on to carry us and uh, you know, there's several of those dudes that, uh, that uh, you know, play a vital part in, in our success. And so uh, this senior class is really proud of them, of what they've done. You know, been in the playoffs all four years of high school and, you know, shared the district championship uh, for the last two years. And so uh, those guys have put a lot into this program and just couldn't be more proud of, uh, of uh, what they've gotten out of it. And you guys do the tradition where you walk across the field with everyone in the flag and everything with the seniors. How special was that to see them? You know, it's neat. This is a, this is a cool class, and they, they – uh, uh, they support each other, you know, uh, in, in just about everything they do. And so uh, uh, for them to be able to get out there and do that tonight after a win, it's, uh, it's real special for them and uh, couldn't be happier. All right, and you guys will take on Academy next week in the first round. What do you have to do to beat them? You know, we, we just got to keep, keep getting better and, and be consistent with what we do. And, uh, you know, we've, uh, you know, the last couple of weeks, you know, we hadn't really been real consistent. Tonight we were better. Uh, and we've, we've got, still got some things we've got to clean up. And so uh, uh, we're going to work really hard at, at uh, you know, being consistent, working hard to control the line of scrimmage on both sides of football and, uh, um, you know, being able to, to do the things that, that, that you need to be able to do to make a deep playoff run. Right, and Teague for you guys has been a little bit of a rivalry game over the past few years. Super close games uh, the past three to four years. This one, not so much. They, uh, you know, you guys got the win over them last year um, in Teague. You know, how great was it just to, to end the year beating someone that's, that's a little bit of a rival for y'all? You know, it, it was a big win for us, you know, and, you know, partly because it was them, but, you know, bigger because of, uh, you know, what was at stake tonight. And so, um, 
you know, for us to be able to get the number one seed and, and, and get that route in the playoffs w was big for us, and it was something that we really wanted to do. And, and, and you know, our kids came in early and set a goal to, to win a district championship. And so uh, for us to be able to accomplish that tonight with, with all that we've been through and uh, all that we've overcome this year, just, just couldn't be proud of the kids and the staff and, and how we've uh, uh, stayed the course and, and, you know, finished the season. Well, congratulations, Coach West. Wins tonight, 33 to 10 over Teague to wrap up that number one seed in the district. They will take on Academy in the first round next Thursday at Waco ISD. They also won our Game of the Week championship trophy, which is almost as cool as winning a share of the district title. So huge win uh, for the Trojans here tonight, 33-10. Again, the final Teague. They are not eliminated from the playoffs. They were already in the playoffs. This all just had to do with seeding. So they will take on Troy and Mejia. That game is Thursday at 730. And let me tell you, you did not want to not get the number one seed in this district because the district that they're going up against is extremely tough. You got Cameron Hill, Rockdale, Teague. You got Cameron Hill, Rockdale. You've got Troy. You've got Academy. All of those teams are very talented. So getting the number one seed was huge for the Trojans here tonight, and they got it done. 33-10, the final again, Academy. West. That will be Thursday night, Waco ISD Stadium. Reporting from West Weight Room, where it is a lot warmer in here than it is outside. I'm Jessica Mori, Channel 6 Sports. <laughs> uh, all right, Jess. I mean, that's a big win. Like I said, West Trojans right there uh, winning district championship. Another team that uh, had a chance to win the old district championship outright, the Holland Hornets. They were coming in red hot. They would wrap it up, taking on Milano. Holland's ball here. Snap to Zane. Spin. Hands off to Brady Shelton. Easy run down the side for the touchdown. Milano's ball trying to catch up here with Holland. Uh, Christian Thurman, the snap passes to Arthur oh, Soto. Oh. Hurdles the Holland player, comes with an inch of a first down. Couldn't snag a touchdown, so Holland's ball once again. Zane Spin, the snap to Caleb Cleary. Uh, yeah, he gets up in a tackled by a Milano player. Ending the first half, didn't matter though, because Holland, they would win and win big in this one. 52 to six, they win the district. We have on the phone right now, Head coach Brad Talbert. Coach, first of all, congratulations. What is the excitement and the feeling going on right now after that big win in the uh, district championship right now? Well, thank you. Uh, thanks for having us and uh, letting people know about the Holland Hornets and uh, win another district championship. Uh, the whole team's excited. The town's excited. And you know, it's just a, it's a good place to be right now. Coach, it's Curtis. How much has that playoff loss to eventual state runner-up Referio sat with some of your upperclassmen, your juniors, your seniors, who, who came back this season? And how much has that driven them through, through 2018? Well, I, I think just leaving that game, the kids knew that we had to work a little bit harder. We had to lift a little bit more weights. And, we, and it, it gave us really good experience. And then uh, scheduling, we, you know, we played Mark. Mark beat us this year. And, uh, you know, we're just playing real good quality teams to, to get ourselves better. Now you guys go into the playoffs, eight-game winning streak. What has been the key over the last few months? Uh, I, I think our kids just – they wanted to be a district champion, and, and they you know, and they got it tonight, and uh, undefeated district champion. And that, that's a badge they'll be able to wear, and nobody will ever take it away from them. And, and I think just, you know, we, you know, we preach weight room, we preach uh, toughness, and, and our kids are just – we got good kids on here, and – and they're, we just got that winning attitude right now. Coach, uh, I've had the pleasure of shooting a couple of your games this season. You guys just seem so even keeled on the sideline. You don't get too high. You don't get too lows. What is this team's biggest strength this year? Well, we try not to panic. You know, when you panic, that means you're, you know, you don't know what's going on or you're lost. So, you know, our kids, our kids have confidence in themselves and what we're doing, and and it, and it's fun whenever things are working. Coach, your defense, outstanding district play. The whole entire, you know, the last couple of months, what has made them so dominating week in and week out? Well, our, our defense coordinator, Robbie Edwards, and our other coaches on the staff, we just, you know, preach being aggressive and getting up in your face and, and coaching assignment and, you know, teaching tackling every day. And the kids like it and they go hard and have fun. Coach, Friday night, 7 p.m. at Buta Hayes, you've got the Junction Eagles. What do, have you been able to follow them? Do you, what, what do you know about Junction right now going into that by district matchup? I'm sorry, I don't have much to tell you on that. I've been so worried about winning this district champion, and we've given all our energy to, you know, teams like Thorndale and Milano and Hearn and and uh, sir, I just, I just, uh, we've just been concentrating on our district right now. That's entirely understandable. To get what, what's the message going to be to your team going into this week? Then we need to go one and zero. Nice. Uh, that's it. That's, it simple. sums it up. That's very simple. Coach, 
We appreciate it big time. Congratulations tonight, and we look forward to uh, covering you guys next week. Yes, sir. Appreciate it. Holland, D.C. There we go. Brad Talbert, the District 13-2A undefeated champions right there. Unbelievable season. They're good. They're very good. They're, they're, they're it's not rolling. like they beat some slouch teams along the way. Thorndale is never bad. Uh, Mart, with that, I mean, nobody's beaten Mart this year. And then uh, Mart goes on the road and beats Crawford during the season. Yeah. This is a talented Hornets squad. And if you don't have a dog in the fight next week and you're looking for a good game to go to, Butte is not that far no, away. No, it's just down the road. Go, go support this team. They've won eight in a row. They're on fire. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of those kids are just very, very good kids on and off the field. Very, very smart. And uh, they're doing some good things over there. They are. All right, let's, uh, so let's go ahead. And the playoff picture right now, very clear in 3A, 6A, and 5A. Let's get down to District 8, 4A, Division 2. <laughs> Four teams fighting for three playoff spots. It gets crazy. It gets really crazy. Lorena, Fairfield, Robinson, they've clinched. Madisonville had a bye tonight. Their season's over. The Mustangs needed some help. It would get really interesting, though, with one particular yeah, game. Salado, if they could knock off Fairfield somehow. But we're going to get to that in just a minute. Connolly. They would advance with a win over Robinson or Salado lost to Fairfield. Second quarter, Cadets up 24-0. Robinson's Jordan Rogers attempts to run left, but quickly taken down by a bunch of Cadets. Connolly's Galen Glenn throws uh, the old long one, Jawan forward for a touchdown. Wow. Yeah, look at that. That's a two-point conversion good, 32-0 Cadets. Trading positions, Connolly's Kavion Gavier uh, tosses that ball to Galen Glenn, catches it in the end zone, 39-0 at the half. Look at this score, 39-14, Connolly. They are in the postseason. Number four, La Vega, looking to wrap up an undefeated district championship in District 5, 4A Division I against Gatesville. The Hornets would punch a ticket to the playoffs if they could win tonight. Last chance, third down for the Hornets. And uh, nope, that was second and goal. They can't punch it in. Third down, same result. Last chance for Gatesville. Fourth and goal. They run the exact same play but with a different quarterback, and then the Hornets take an early 7-0 lead. Here it comes for the Pirates, though. Elijah Cummings rumbles forward, gets across the, gets across the stake into the Hornet territory with the first down. Pirates running back Jarquay Walton. We'll hear Ooh, about man. him a little bit later. Zone Reed blasts through a couple of defenders, turns on the Jets, ties this game at 7, going to the big board now. 49-14, La Vega, they're undefeated. District champion scores from around 4A. All right, China Spring. Boy, look at that game. On the road, they fall by two to Brownwood, 42 to 40. Number 12, Lorena in a shootout. Big, big win there going to the playoffs, 64 9 over Mejia. Salado falls to Fairfield, 28 15. La passes in a shootout against Fredericksburg, 49 47. Wow. All right, over in Axel, Longhorns needed to win to clinch a playoff spot. A Bosqueville win was secured outright district title. Tyler Webb making the handoff to Marcelo Stell, runs over, leaps over the Longhorns. And for the score, 6 0 Bulldogs. Axel Kobe Hollinsworth under pressure and looks deep to throw to Hayden Sheffield. No good, though. Oh, just out of the reach. Bulldogs turn now. Webb gets the ball to Jacob Bravo, who takes the center and right into the end zone. Boston leads 12 0. And we go to the big board. Oh, wow. 82 19, your final. Over in Hearn. The Rosebud Lock Cougars looking to play spoiler against the Eagles. Tonight, false start for the Eagles, and that's going to be Micah Smith throwing a deep post route. That's Javerion Bailey in the end zone. Got to celebrate that one. 14 0 Hearn. Just getting started. Smith retreating in trouble. He escapes. He takes this one home. 27 0 is the Hearn score at that point. The Eagles Ooh. are soaring. When you look at this one on the jet on the uh, jet sweep option, and that is a touchdown. Final score 46 0 Hearn. All right, battle of the top two teams in District 11 2A Division 2. Number three, Mart hosting Frost. It, can, somebody, can somebody stop Mart? I don't think so. They are steamrolling everybody. They're going to make a deep run this year. Tyree Corn bounces off a few tacklers. Uh oh, he loses the football. Devin Grubin for Frost recovers. Polar Bears, they would go three and out, though. That's bad news. Mart back on offense. Tyree Corn, he's going to redeem himself here. Takes a handoff left side for six. Two point conversion is good. Eight nothing Panthers. Yeah, they don't kick the extra point. No. Frost responds. And Tony Alvarado finds Colton Ward wide open for the touchdown. Eight six at that point. But how about those Mart Panthers? 67 to six. They win another district championship. They do. 
Let's head out to Bartlett. The Bulldogs squaring off with Iola tonight. Daniel Juarez here for the Bulldogs is going to pass to Jared Cooper. That is good. He's taken down by Andrew England of Iola. Juarez handed the ball. He's going to run into Iola's defense, though. Another run by Juarez here is stopped as he tries to go up the middle. Then here. Another successful pass. This one's to Marcus Belcher. He's going to get brought down. That's Andrew Crenshaw making the stop. Go to the big board. 42-0. Iola had that one in the third. Let's, let's head out to Granger. Uh, here we go. Lions scoring off against Chilton. Ryan Pickett calling his own number. Going to run to the left side. He's in for the touchdown. And Granger comes on top early. 7-0. Later, Thomas Rhodes hands off to Carlos Reyna. 25 yards on the pickup. In a Lions first down. Look at that. Nice run there. And then Pickett calls his own number again. Gets closer to the end zone. They would eventually punch it in. Chilton, they win. Actually, no, I'm sorry. Granger, they win 35 nothing. Scores from around Class 2A. Crawford takes care of Heiko 14-10 on the road. San Saba, the machine, keeps rolling. 62-12 over DeLeon. What a win. Goldthwait Ooh. falls at home to Valley Mills, 55-14. Riesel, they knock off Italy, 33-6, to clear that district's playoff picture up a little bit. Itasca, they beat Moody tonight, 22-0. Big win for the Wampus Cats. Thorndale takes care of Marlin, 35-3. And Hubbard on top of Meridian tonight, 14 to six. Listen, we want to make one correction here. We said that China Spring, we had it wrong, that China right. Spring lost. China Spring actually won 47 to 34 over Brownwood. So they let's are make in that the playoffs. They are in the playoffs. All right, let's go back out to Jessica Mori here. She's bench pressing what for some reason. World? Hopefully that's about 225 pounds, Jess. What do we have Listen, going on she's getting, here? She's working out for the playoffs <laughs> next week. Hey guys, will you leave me alone in a weight room? I gotta, you know, put in some work here, just like the West Trojans did when they got their win over Teague today. Also, that was like rep 5700, and those are technically 45s, not 10s. <laughs> West got the win tonight, 33 to 10 over Teague. The Trojans get the number one seed in the district, meaning they will take on the fourth seed Academy. That game will be at Waco ISD Stadium on Thursday. Now Teague. They're not out of the playoffs. They were already in. It just had to do with seeding with this game. They ended up getting the third seed with the loss. They could have had a share of the district title, but they ended up getting the third seed. So they will take on Troy. That game is 730 Thursday night in Mahaya. And then I just got word Rockdale is going to play Grandview. That game will be Saturday at 1 at Waco ISD Stadium. And like you mentioned, China Spring with a huge win coming back over Brownwood. They had to win by 9, I believe, and they ended up winning by 13 to make the playoffs. Even if they would have won but not by 9, they wouldn't have made the playoffs. So they ended up making the playoffs. They will play Fort Worth Benbrook. That game is Friday at 7.30 at Waxahachie. So we've got a ton of great games. We know Weston Academy is going to be a good game. It was so important for the Trojans to wrap up the number one seed in this district because they could have played anyone, you know, from Rockdale to Troy to Cameron Yo to Academy. These that district is extremely tough that they were going up against. So it is huge for them to get the number one seed here. Big for the seniors. Huge game here for the Trojans. Uh, I got to get back to this this lift here before I hit the road to Ames, Iowa for the Baylor game tomorrow. My flight is bright and early, but you always got to put some work in before you go. Got to get those gains, so uh, I got to get a few more, knock out a few more sets here. I'm going to send it back to you guys west with the big 33 to 10 win over Teague. Is, is it really necessary to get more gains if all your bench pressing there is a 10? That's it, though. Hey, listen, she's working hard, though. It's not about it's, it's about the quality. Tens on rep. each side. What? <laughs> yeah, it's about yeah, it's about there are tens on each side. It's not just one ten. Hey, at least she's working so there's out, tens though. on each side. At least she's work. She's working out over there. Yeah, We're working yeah, out her mouth guys, over here. About, That's yeah. true. My jaw's getting a lot of exercise right now. <laughs> I know, I know. Well, listen, let's go dive into Class Class A real quick. Uh, Abbott had a big game against Aquila, and I'll tell you what, Aquila just came in and steamrolled them 46 0. Covington, big win over Golson, 42 32. Over in Waco, Riker squaring off tonight with Bernie Geneva. Those Eagles knocked the Cougars out of the playoffs last year. They've got the ball. Time ticking down before the half. Cade Barone lobs it down the field. Where'd it go? It there went it to Joel Calderon. Oh, wow. He pulls it down for the score before the half. They go 28-8. It's not over yet. They get the ball back because of a fumble on the kickoff. Barone throws a dime to Ethan Hauser to score with eight seconds left in the half. Then 
on their first play from scrimmage in the third quarter. Wow. They hand it off back to Devin Eric. Good he fire. has a burst of speed. Ain't nobody going to catch this guy. Not even the Cougars. Is he, uh, that makes it 42-7 at that point with the extra point. Big Board says, well, 42-7. All right. Scores from around taps. Live Oak taking on Kerrville, and they fall in this one 32-14. And Vanguard just uh, didn't have it tonight. They lose 49 to nothing. Now, every week, we honor one outstanding high school football player with our Gridiron Player of the Week award. We told you about him earlier. He had another touchdown tonight. Well, he had five of them last week as La Vega won a district championship. This week, we go and introduce you to sophomore La Vega running back Jarquay Walton, who played that pivotal role for the Pirates last week. Yeah, I didn't expect. I would just run the ball. The La Vega Pirates head into week 11 at 7-2 and two and is district champion. That part comes after a 57-19 win over Brownwood on senior night. One of the catalysts for that win, sophomore running back Jarquay right, Walton, who ran for five TDs against the Lions. For the game, coaches like, do it for the seniors. I was like, I got y'all back, it's y'all last home game. That's it. Oh, he's a hard worker. I mean, he, not only is he a hard worker, he's he, he's a coach's dream because he's he's got great speed, he's hard to tackle. And he's got a, he's got a really good vision. But Walton and his coach both give credit elsewhere for Jarquay's huge senior night stat line. Well, Jarquay just did what we expected him to do. I mean, he uh, you know he got a lot of help from the guys up front, the five guys up front blocking for him, and so uh, he was able to find a crease and, and get big yards when he needed to. Appreciate it. Keep doing what y'all doing. We can't win the game without them blocking. So I wouldn't have five touchdowns without them blocking. So keep doing what they're doing. With this year's playoff run and two seasons left. Jarquay is living up to the potential his coaches saw in him as he developed. We knew he was going to be a good player when he was in junior high. I mean, watching him go in seventh and eighth grade, we knew he was going to be something special. He was last year as a freshman, and uh, he's done everything we asked him to do as a sophomore. And as the Pirates continue to push toward the playoffs, they remember they haven't accomplished their goals just yet because they won district. It's very important, but that's not what we're aiming for. We're aiming for the state championship. Again, he had a Big role tonight yeah. in another win. La Vega finishes district play unbeaten, 4-0 in District 5, 4 Division 1. They're on to the postseason now as a one seed, and it's never a bad thing to be a one seed, especially in a bracket where you have to go through defending state champion Carthage. Uh, you have to go through Argyle, who La Vega has already played this year. Yeah. It does not get easier for No, here. not at all. We were uh, right here during, the, uh, during that story. We were trying to look at... Who's all playing who? Because we have a lot of uh, teams and a lot yeah. of schedules coming in. You have a few on your I, board right there. Here, here's what we know at this point when it comes to the playoff picture. Midway will host because they're the one seed in Division One because Coppers Cove got in that Midway Belton game was for seeding. Uh, Temple will host because they are the one seed in Division Two. That means Coppers Cove and Belton will be on the road next week. China Spring will play Benbrook. That game is Friday, 7:30 at Waxahachie. Weston Academy we know is Thursday at 7:30 at Waco ISD. Stadium. Uh, Cameron Yo will face Whitney. That one we do not have information for. Trust me, we're, we're in the process of working on getting it. Uh, Coppers Cove, they will head to Longview Friday, 730. Longview is 10 and 0 right now, and I believe ranked number, number four, four in the, the state. state of Texas. Going to be a tough one. Holland, they will take on Junction at uh, Shelton Stadium at Buda Hayes High School. That game is at 7 p.m. on Friday. Uh, like Jessica mentioned earlier, Teague versus Troy. That game is Thursday night, 7.30 at Mejia. And then Rockdale will face Grandview Saturday at 1 p.m. at Waco ISD Stadium. Obviously, that list is not complete. No, not at all. They're it still... is a very fluid list. We've been writing more and more down as we've gone through the night. It's what we have as we speak to you. And a lot of coaches you know, that we've been texting and, and uh, talking to throughout the show saying, hey, look, we're, we're talking to other coaches about sites, uh, trying to get neutral sites, and, and trying to get everything kind of wrapped up, hopefully, either if it's not tonight, tomorrow they can finalize uh, everything going on because it's going to get wild. Keep in mind, we did this story over the summer. The UIL actually talked about make, making it possible for everybody to host the first round playoff game because of the so-called stadium shuffle we see every year in the first round. Yeah. Trying to book a stadium is ridiculously hard these days. And, and they should. You know, district champions should, they should host the first round game. They deserve it. They deserve it. It keeps the fans here locally. And uh, but some of them, they have a short week. Some of them are playing on Thursday night. Mm -hmm. they got to get prepared, especially uh, coming up tomorrow, uh, where you might have, you know, film and walkthroughs. Now it's like, okay, we got to start looking at film for our opponent on Thursday, and uh, everything gets pushed back or pushed up uh, a day or so. And then you look at Rockdale. They beat, if they can beat Grandview on Saturday, 
then there's the possibility of a, of, a, of a Friday game immediately after that in the second round. Yeah, it's going to get crazy. Get cra it's only, it's hey, my favorite time It's only the, year, the first week of the playoffs, but I'll tell you what, these last 11 weeks have been incredible. We have seen a lot of teams that we didn't think were going to do well. They have done very well. Uh, a lot of teams that we thought that were going to be at the top, they have you know, regressed. And then you have teams that we were very interested in, especially in Class 6, say, Lake Ohio and Temple moved up. What were they going to do? Of course, Temple, you know, they, they rolled uh, pretty much throughout the entire season. Yeah. Had a blip on the screen the last couple of weeks. But, hey, look, they're, uh, they're in. They're hosting. Uh, oh, no, uh, Temple? The, the, yeah, Temple. Yeah, they're, they're hosting. And, uh, you know, midway, you know, coming out after uh, struggling out of the gate the first couple of games, boy, they, they caught fire. So it's going to be really, really yeah, good. Mark Panthers are playing well. Holland is playing well. La Vega playing well. I mean, the usual suspects that we, we know that is going to go deep. They're, they're rocking and rolling. Yeah. No, it's going to be a fantastic playoff run. Look for some teams to make some really special runs. Uh, who's uh, outside of Mark? Because we've been talking about that one all season. Who's one you got going deep? Man, you're going to put me on the spot now. I, I do it I every know, week. Every week, and I, every week I kind of like, well, I, I, don't, I don't know. Um, I, you know, you have to get back on me on that. I, I don't even know. There's, oh, I'm there's, going with Holland. I don't know. Holland, yeah, Holland has I'm a shot. You know who I, who I am, am uh, happy for is, uh, is Brian Bell, China Spring. Yeah. They were 0-3, and, and then tonight, you know. On point differential. Yeah, point differential. <laughs> because one they thing, get in. It, they one get thing in. to understand about that playoff scenario is Gatesville beat China Spring, who beat Brownwood. Brownwood beat Gatesville. Yeah. And so that just created a massive cluster. Congratulations to the Cougars. Yeah, man. big, big deal. All right, that'll, be, that'll do it for the uh, regular season portion. We have two more Friday Night Lights left, the postseason edition. So we will see you guys back next Friday night. Week one of the playoffs, the bye district round. It's going to get wild. You better buckle up. For Nick Canazales, Curtis Quillen, Jessica Mori, we'll see you next week under the lights.